Hi, I wish we were all together in Bryce Canyon, but it seems like this year is not going to be possible. Anyways, I'm happy to be here. I'm going to talk about ArcGIS Quick Capture, a new mobile app from Esri. My name is Ismael Chivite, and I work as a product manager in Redlands, California. This is the agenda for today. I think it's going to take us about 30 minutes to go through this. Let's just start with our vision and use cases for Quick Capture. The concept behind Quick Capture is actually pretty simple. It's a big button mobile app. You push on a button and then we create a GIS feature. We get the location from your device and we add an event to the map. That simple. We want to keep it super simple for people in the field to use this so they can capture data with minimum distractions. This simplicity, this big button user experience is ideal for certain workflows. Workflows where people don't want complications, they want it easy. Uh, it's also ideal for at speed and rapid data collection workflows. Now, before I go and describe some of these, I want you to try the application. So please bring your mobile phone. You are going to install Quick Capture from the store and then you are going to download a project and capture data. So once you have Quick Capture installed, you don't have to sign in, just use the camera on your phone and scan this barcode. You can also scan the barcode from within Quick Capture. You can, you can basically get into the application without signing in. You don't have to sign in with your account. There is a little link that says continue without signing in. You go there, you download the project, you capture data, and then you can use a web browser to check out the web map at this location. Just give it a go, uh, put this presentation in pause, and take your time to download and submit data. So pause the video, and then we will continue. Actually see it in action. Uh, this is my mobile phone. I can open Quick Capture. And from here at the bottom, you see continue without signing in. I tap in there, plus button, in this case, I'm going to scan a barcode. So I'm going to point this here. Bang, it scans, downloads my project. This is a BioBlitz project. I need to enter my um, ID, say, you know, Ismail in this case. It's the name of the observer. And now I'm ready to capture data. So as you can see here, I have a few buttons. If I tap at the bottom, this will basically capture my location. So as I move, it will create a line in ArcGIS. Uh, but since I'm sitting in my house, so I'm going to just stop that one. And then um, I have the big buttons. So say I find a mammal. So now I snap a photo of a mouse and uh, that will create an event. You can see at the top, I have a number two indicating that I have two features in my device. Uh, they will be sent automatically in just a second. There you go. Uh, the features were were sent. So this means that I can now go into a web map, which I have here. And um, this is actually where I am. So that's the feature that was just added. I can click on it. And that's my mouse, right? You can also see that this was just added. This is the actual feature that I added. So just for fun, I'm going to add another feature. I'm going to uh, go back into my phone. You can see my phone here. I'm going to tap on other. That's another button I configured. So I'm going to take a snapshot of the screen of my computer. And in this case, the button is configured to allow me to add some comments. So I'm going to say this is a test. And then I say done. And again, at the top, I have a number one. In a few seconds, uh, this will send the data right away while I capture data. So this is pretty much how uh, Quick Capture works. Uh, let's come back here and uh, see that, oh, there is a red, uh, oh, and another item in there. That's nice. So that's exactly the, the data that I sent. And actually, I'm not showing the comments here, but if I go to the uh, web map, I should see the comments. So I'm going to uh, open the table. And in here, I'm going to sort by time, descending, other, Ismael, time, accuracy, and here I should have the comments field. Oh, there you go. I had it disabled. And there you go. This is a test. So that's the feature I just added. So as you can see, it's 
I mean, it's extremely simple to use, isn't it? Now that you understand the basics of how the application works, because you have used it yourself, I'm going to talk about how other people are using this mobile app. The Department of Transportation in Colorado uses ArcGIS Quick Capture extensively against their ArcGIS Enterprise. They use it for mapping assets, for documenting issues, for reporting hazards. This is a photo of a snowplow, and you can see it's moving. Uh, they actually use the mobile app while driving. You don't have to physically touch with your fingers the application. You can just use your voice. Okay, so in this case, uh, you can configure the application to just listen to your voice. And if you say mechanical assist, well, that matches a label in the project. So that button is going to get pushed and you can capture points for events, in this case, hazards, but you could just as well uh, capture polylines for portions of you know, the road that you have inspected to flag speed limit zones, etc. This is an example from uh, Minnesota. They have configured quick capture so uh, people can do aerial surveys. So as they perform inspections, aerial inspections from helicopters on power lines, they can push the buttons in the mobile app to capture certain information that is important to them. So here the key is, well, I want to capture data. It has to be georeferenced, uh, but I don't have time to open dialogues and type here and there. It has to be like super quick. And you can see the configurations that they put together for their own workflow. So think not only power line and pipeline inspections, but also wildlife aerial surveys or right of way patrols, etc. Uh, in emergency response and public safety, quick capture is also very handy because it requires so little training for people to get uh, proficient with it that is is a great tool. Um, not to mention that you don't spend time while capturing data. You don't get distracted. You can keep doing what you are typically doing and capture the data super, super fast. I think windshield damage assessments or search and rescue operations, police patrols, where you just want to get the phone out of your pocket, to snap a photo and keep moving. And that gets a point in the map with certain attributes, with the photo, with the name of the person that captured the data and the time. So again, quick. Uh, this is a great example. This is from California. Uh, there is a uh, company that uh, has used quick capture to map vines and I love this project because it shows that quick is not in conflict with high accuracy as you can see in the photo they are using high accuracy GNSS receivers with quick capture so this gives you of course higher precision data but the experience for capturing that data is extremely simple. They chose Quick Capture because it was easy for their field workers to understand how the application works. Again, minimum training, but also maximum efficiency when capturing this data. Just to give you an idea, they captured half a million vines with submitter accuracy. So they didn't want people in the field to spend time panning around the map. They wanted, boom push the button, move on, set up the pole, push the button, and move on, and move on, and move on. So, well, as you can see, really quick capture is about a different user experience for uh, field data capture. It's an experience that is extremely simple and is well suited for some specific workflows where people either cannot be trained or uh, they don't want complications, they want things simple. So it's a great complement to other field data collection applications like Survey123 and Collector and others. Next, we're going to have a closer look at the mobile application itself. So the mobile app, as we described, concept, big buttons. It works on iOS, on Android, as well as Windows. It can hit ArcGIS Online feature layers or ArcGIS Enterprise. So if you have ArcGIS Enterprise, you have quick capture already and it can work against it. And of course, the application is designed to work offline and online. So if you are disconnected from the network, you can still capture in data, no problem. When you are connected, the application auto syncs and sends all your observations to ArcGIS. From a licensing perspective, as I said, 
you already have this mobile application is included with field workers, which I'm sure all of you already have. Um, you use creator user types to create the projects, but to actually use the application, field workers is all you need. You can also, in some cases, it makes sense to buy a license of quick capture on top of an editor user type. As you may know, editor user types do not have licenses for any mobile applications, but if you are just going to use Quick Capture, you can actually buy Quick Capture as an add-on on top of these low-cost editor user types. As we will see later, you can also use the mobile app without an ArcGIS account. In fact, in the hands-on exercise earlier in this session, you didn't have to log in in Quick Capture to submit or use the BioBlitz project, right? You use the application anonymously. This is possible because when you host or publish your Quick Capture projects into an organization that is licensed with ArcGIS Hub Premium, then you can share your projects publicly. So no need for an RGS account. Again, more on that later. I think the biggest point here is you already have the app if you have field worker user types. Next, I'm going to cover how you can create your own quick capture projects. It's actually relatively easy. We have a web tool that helps you create uh, over the web quick capture projects in a visual way, as you can see here. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of this so you can see how, how this works. The foundation of a quick capture project is one or many feature services. I'm logged in in ArcGIS Online at the moment, um, and you can see that I have a layer, my BioBlitz layer. And this layer has points and also poly polylines. This is just a feature layer. There is no trick to it. If I switch to the data view, you will see that I have a bunch of different fields. These are basically my attributes. Some of this you will be able to auto-calculate from your quick capture projects, as you will see in, in a second. I think it's important also, um, if you go into the visualization tab, this is the the rendering, the symbology that has been set on the feature layer. Um, we are not looking at a web map here. We are looking at the, the layer. So the layer has visualization properties, as you can see. Uh, so anytime I add this layer into a client, it will use this uh, legend uh, for it. And this is not mandatory, but it's kind of nice to have this set up before you go into the Quick Capture Designer, because as you will see in a second, every one of these categories will be transformed into a button in your project. Again, not mandatory, but nice to have. Anyways, if you have a layer, you can create a Quick Capture project. So right from the app launcher here at the top, you can actually launch Quick Capture. If you happen to be using uh, ArcGIS Enterprise, you can also connect this application into Enterprise. So this is the gallery of Quick Capture projects that I have created. I'm going to create a new project. There are some templates that you can use. In this case, I'm going to create a project from an existing layer. So this is really browsing to all of the layers uh, that I have. Um, I can even browse for layers that have been shared with my account and create projects on top of them. So in my case, I'm going to look for that BioBlitz layer that we were just looking at. And now I'm going to click on Next to create buttons from the layer symbology. I can give this uh, a name. So this, let's call this BioBlitz V2. I can select in which folder I want to put this in and then click on Create. So again, this is looking at the feature service having a look at the legend and creating the appropriate buttons. So as you can see, I have two groups of buttons, uh, one for my points, my observations. So actually I can say here, those are my observations. And I can arrange these in say three or maybe two columns. That's your call and really depends on what you want to target. Are you targeting an, an iPad or are you targeting more of a an iPhone type of you know user experience? And the second group is track. 
And this is my polyline layer because remember, quick capture can work with polylines, right? So this um, layer doesn't have any templates, any legend predefined. So I'm going to just say, you know, this is my track. In this case, I actually don't want a label for the group. So I'm going to take it out. So again, you know, my polyline button, my point buttons. From here, you can actually rearrange them as you like. You can change the appearance. So here I can select a few buttons and say I want them big or small or medium, rounded corners or straight. I can check and add the border. I can change the fill. Uh, maybe I want to make them a little bit darker. So you can make them uh, darker if you like. And of course, you can play with the images. So here with the images, it took automatically the images from the legend. But, you know, for an insect, instead of having a black dot, I can actually uh, navigate and, and look for that icon. So I'm going to select, you know, this particular image. There you go. That's the insect. And then for the plant, I will go with that bird. And since, well, the icons don't stand up good on top of this dark background, I will actually go back to white to make them look better. That's much better. Okay, so other than the look and feel of the project, you can also play with other characteristics. What is going to happen when you click on this button? So in this case, when you tap on insect on the data tab, you can see that we are going to create a feature on this layer specifically a point, right? So it's going to create a point. Do you want to take a photo? Yes or no? So if you check, then this symbol appears indicating that when you push that button, we get the location and we open the camera so you can take a photo. And if you select multiple buttons, you can actually apply this type of properties to all of them. So now every time you push a button, a photo is taken. Another important concept is that of device variables. So here you can see all the attributes in the layer. Right, so um, you can um, calculate some of these fields. So in this case, um, there is a field called accuracy. So if I click here, you can see I have device variable, and these are all the device variables I can calculate. What's the speed of the user at this particular moment? What's the latitude, the longitude? In this case, I want to use the horizontal accuracy. So you can play with these device variables and do many things once the user tabs. Um, we can also work with the concept of uh, user inputs. So for example, when you tap on other category, I don't know what this really is. So I wish you could insert a few comments. So just happens that I have a field for comments here. In here, I'm going to go and say button user input. In other words, I want to pop up a dialogue when this button is pushed. So the user can enter some comments. The label of my dialogue will be comments. I'm going to make it multi-line text. So you can see that it's pretty straightforward to create your projects and define the behavior of uh, the buttons. Um, there are many other properties that I will not look in detail here, but you can select a, a map. So in this case, I'm using the topographic map, but uh, you may want to choose you know, a different map here. Um, and, and you can even configure offline maps if you, if you like. Um, what other things can you do? Uh, you can create exclusive groups. We will talk about this in a second. You can associate webhooks to automate email notifications when data is sent. Uh, you can change the project details, etc. So you can see that this is a fairly straightforward experience. And the beauty of this is, you know, you can now scan the QR code, load it into your mobile app and start testing things out to see if they work. And if they don't, you can always come in and start switching things around, adding more buttons, etc., until you get this in good, good shape. Once your project is in good um, standing, you can share it with other groups in your organization through links, through QR codes, etc. There are a few other things that you should be aware of, you, that you should know. Uh, among them, the idea of nested data capture. And this is actually unique to ArcGIS Quick Capture, where, as you can see here, if you have polyline or polygon buttons, they can be all active at once. In this case, we are capturing more than one record at once. There is a bike path on the right, a sidewalk on the right, and a sidewalk on the left. So you can capture multiple 
a record sand one. And while these polyline buttons are active, you can actually push on traffic light to get a point. And that's extremely useful when you are on the move. It's called nested data capture and it's quite unique to quick capture. The other idea is exclusive groups. In some cases, you don't want two buttons to be active at once. Uh, so for example, here, a trail is either paved or not paved. It's either beginner or advanced, but it cannot be both. So that's why exclusive groups can be configured. So when you tap on one button, the other one is automatically deactivated. User inputs, we also talked about this very briefly. This is just the ability to create custom dialogues that pop when you push a button to help you capture additional information. Could be, say, a cost center, the road marker, um, you know, a list of values, etc. And there are different, you know, options with uh, user inputs. You can create a project user input which launches at the beginning or a button user input which launches every time a button is pushed. Uh, this is well documented in case you want to look at uh, this type of options. You can arrange the the buttons side by side along with a map so you can see what you are capturing all the time as opposed to having to flip the display and switch between the buttons and the on the map. This is ideal when you configure the map in your project with an online web map so you can see what other people are doing around you right while capturing data. Uh, device variables, we also talked about this. This is uh, basically what you use to automatically calculate certain GIS attributes. Anything from the speed to the accuracy to things like that. Uh, this is actually very powerful because you keep the experience very simple, but under the covers you can calculate a lot of different things. There are over 40 variables and when you bring in GNSS receivers, you have even more device variables as those come from the NIMIA sentences from, from the device. Using external GNSS receivers is obviously useful because you get more accurate information but also because quick capture is specifically designed to work at high frequencies. So you can work at two or at five hertz. That means two locations per second or five locations per second, which is important when you are moving very fast in a helicopter or even in a car. It allows you to create very dense and accurate uh, polylines. The connectivity with GPS devices is like you know you normally do with Survey123 or, or Collector. You connect via Bluetooth. And, and, and that's it. Now, because Quick Capture is supported on Windows, you can also even connect via USB or even network connections. Um, this slide is basically for ArcGIS Enterprise users. I want to make sure you understand that you can connect Quick Capture to your enterprise. As you can see here, when you go into quickcapture.arcgis.com, you can enter the URL of your portal. This is good if you have an old version of portal, like 1.7 or so. If you are on 1.10.8 or 10.8.1, then you don't even have to do this because the Quick Capture Designer, the web experience, is already included with your ArcGIS Enterprise install. Um, this is just an animation showing how you can configure custom maps with your project. So in this case, you can select from any of the base maps in your organization, but also you can select custom web maps. You can select vector tile packages and mobile map packages as well if you want to work offline. The beauty here is that the author of the project configures the base map so the end user doesn't have to worry about download the offline maps. This is an option where you can save your projects as kind of cookie cutter template type of things, which is very, very useful. Uh, this is from Quick Capture Designer. And this is what we described before in terms of public projects. So if you have ArcGIS Hub Premium, you can share your projects anonymously. And this is great for crowdsourcing and for citizen science as well. I want to emphasize that this option is not available unless you have ArcGIS Hub Premium. So if you don't have ArcGIS Hub Premium, then your users will always need a named user if they want to use the Quick Capture mobile application. Uh, workflow automation is a big deal. Uh, we know that uh, from all the different Survey123 uh, projects out there, so we decided to bring it into Quick Capture as well. Workflow automation allows you to do 
uh, things right after data is captured. You know, if an emergency call is made from quick capture, who is going to get the email or the SMS message or even a voicemail? Um, these are some of the typical things that people want to do, like instant notifications. I submit an observation and then automatically I send an SMS. Or maybe uh, someone captures data and I automatically want to enrich that GIS feature. For example, I want to calculate the closest address to the location that was submitted from Quick Capture. And that can happen through a webhook. You don't have to ask people for a zip code or an address. If you know the location, uh, then you know the closest address. Uh, finally, also webhooks are used for automatic data transfer. So as, uh, say, accidents or vehicle you know, issues get submitted, you can push the data into an ArcGIS feature layer, of course, so you can feed your dashboards, but why not? You can also feed an Excel file through a webhook, you know, hosted in, in the cloud. So this is all doable without writing a single line of code using webhooks. Uh, this is all done with Integromat at the moment. This is the connector that we are built. We have built is for Integromat. We are looking also at Microsoft Automate, but we don't have it just yet. It will come uh, in in a near future, hopefully. And um, I want to close just the session. We are running out of time um, to describe where you can learn more and a little bit about the roadmap. So if you want to start quick, I recommend this blog post by Bernie, getting started with ArcGIS Quick Capture. If you Google, you will find it right away. It's in the ArcGIS blog. This may take you, I don't know, maybe 90 minutes to go through this. And it gives you like a solid foundation to start your own projects and figuring out how this could apply to your own workflows. If you want to go into more depth, maybe you want to try this live training seminar. It's free if you have an ArcGIS account. And uh, next, of course, Geonet. Geonet is, to me, um, like a great resource, not only because we have many blogs, actually here you can find more tutorials, but it's a great resource because here you can ask questions. So if you get stuck, you can always come here, um, add questions to the Quick Capture team, and we try to be responsive. So we will always be, be there. It's, it's generally faster than going through tech support. Not as official, but definitely it's... it's it's a great resource. And of course, the documentation. If you look for the doc on Quick Capture, there is, there is a gallery of examples. There are resources and help topics of all sorts that you can always access to learn more. Um, and this is the URL of the GeoNet place in case you want to uh, go with it. You can also subscribe and kind of get notifications whenever we make announcements. I'm highlighting GeoNet because realistically, if you are going to work with Quick Capture, this is the place where you want to be. This is where we are going to issue uh, the, the announcements of new releases, hot fixes, where we are going to measure your interest on new features, etc. Um, in terms of roadmap, there are a couple of things I want to highlight. One is integration with oriented imagery catalogs. This is all about making the experience of viewing and exploring, exploiting the photos that you take in the field much, much better. So as you can see here, you snap a photo and then because Quick Capture can can collect information about the heading of the photo, the pitch and the role of the device, you can explore interactively all these photos like you can see here. So we can tell you not only where the photo was taken, but in what direction you were looking at. And uh, also you, want, you can tap on the map to understand how many photos have been taken where that location you clicked on appears, right? So uh, this uh, is in the early adopter program already in, in case you want to try. And I think it's a fantastic uh, improvement if you are documenting construction sites or documenting code violations, asset inspections. It just brings a, a, another level of interactivity between you and the photos that you take in the field. And, and this one is quite interesting too. This is the integration of ArcGIS Quick Capture with drones. So typically in a workflow with a drone, you fly to capture images and then you do post-processing on those images. What we want to do here is to use the imagery from the drone while you are in the field to capture data. So since you can, on your uh, side scan application from Esri, you can get live imagery from your drone, um, a person can use Quick Capture 
to listen to the location of the drone and push the big buttons to start capturing information. Maybe you want to simply drop a point in a search and rescue operation, or maybe you want to draw a line or a polyline uh, to highlight maybe a flooded area that you are flying over. So we are really excited about this. Um, it's also um, available in, in the early adopter program. So if you want to uh, work with this, just email us at quickcapture at esri.com. So with that, uh, actually, you know, this is a little bit more on ice in the sky, kind of conceptually, right? The imagery and the telemetry come real time from the drone into your iPad where SiteScan is running. And because Quick Capture is connected to SiteScan to your iPad, uh, we use the location of the drone as if it were the location of your own phone. So you can push information quickly uh, into field workers, analysts, or dashboards using the imagery, of course, from your um, drone. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. If you have any uh, questions, I think we should be able to connect during this conference. Otherwise, you have my email here. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much.